All right, working on the timer again. Notice I got the lights removed. Got a light switch here, which allows me to kill power to the timer when I'm working on it. This is power going to the timer. This is power coming into the switch. Power goes to the bottom of the terminals. Power going out goes to the top. Just in, I'm not gonna start the switch upside down. I did measure between neutral and hot. I'm getting 120, and I am getting 60 hertz. You know, getting 120 also from ground to that. Or not, I don't remember. But. Just don't think it's working. So I should be able to hear it. I don't feel anything either. Turn that on, and I get 120 on that terminal there. So, I, there's no reason for this timer not to be working. You know, because again. That's terminal A. This one here with the white wire. That's where the neutral, all the neutrals go on that. This white wire here is what sends power to the timer motor. It's the line voltage goes on that. This is your load. This is another line. That's another load. So you hook this one up for 240 voltage. And I'm getting 120 and I'm getting 60 hertz. There's no reason for this timer not to be working. Or it's intermittent, I don't know. But, the power off. Let me pull this motor out of here. And we'll uh, take a look at the wiring. Maybe it's a bad connection, maybe something's jammed. I don't know, but if I can't figure it out, I got another timer ready to go. I'll take this one back to Home Depot and get my money back. All right, here's the motor here. I got the power off now, but none of these gears are moving. I don't even hear it operating. So, I don't know, something could be broken or loose. I'll hook it up to the other 120 terminal on here, and we'll see what happens. If it still doesn't operate, then I'm gonna swap it out. All right, here's the new timer, it's the GE, it's digital. Time is 3.13 p.m. We'll need a jumper to wire this, I'll show you later. This is your hot, neutral, I believe this is a uh, hot and neutral or it might be back. I don't know. I'll look at the paperwork again. Got your switch. Flick it up. It'll run in timer mode. Down. It's off. Flick it down. It stays permanently on. There's no power to this, but it's got a battery backup. So, you, so if the power goes out, you don't have to reset the time each time, the, each time you lose power. The neighbors make your noise. Anyway, this sends power to the timer. It's off at the moment. So if I have to do work on the timer for a reason, I flick this switch off and that kills the power to the timer so I don't have to flip the breaker in the house. This sends power to the light switches up to the lights. So the timer will basically send power up to this switch. And as long as it's in the up position, lights will work. If for some reason I want the you know I want the lights off for whatever reason, changing a bulb or replacing a fixture or whatever. You know, I don't have to you know, I don't have to mess with the switch, you know, less less parts to wear out. These are in commercial grade switches, good for 15, 20 amps, so you're not your cheap 50 cent light switch for your house. These cost about four to eight dollars a piece. These are thick and heavy duty, they're made for this type of power and the load that I'm putting on them. So I'll finish wiring this up and if everything's connected correctly, it should run. All right, it's wired in, power's still off at the switch. So this is the power coming in. You got your main 120 hot wire coming in here, plus a jumper, which goes to L3 or terminal 3. Then you got the hot for the load, terminal 4, which goes out to the switch up here. And when it's on, it'll send part of the lights up, up out. It'll send part of the lights outside. Both neutrals are under terminal 2, and the two grounds get connected to the ground screw right here. A for automatics, now about 330, 327. It's in the off position. Again, put it on. Timer, it'll run the time set program. You got like 10 different pro days and programs you can run. It's just set to go on at 7, off at 8. Put it on that, it'll manually override it and be on all the time. But this will just be this is just to control it. I gotta put a cover on it, but I want to make sure everything's wired correctly first. So, in theory, I flick this switch, and if everything's wired correctly. Let me shut the door, that should be safe, I'll hide any uh, explosions. 
Moment of truth, where I lose power, nothing's tripped yet. Get this open now with one hand. Red LED, which I assume means it's good. Orange illuminates when power is applied to the timer. And this green light or light when it's set to send power to the lights. So it's wired correctly so far. Switch to the timer. See, it's not going to turn on yet. But you can see the magnetic contacts there. They verify the lights are off. Which they are. So, verify this is wired correctly. Put this to off. I'm going to hit this to on. And let's see if anything blows up. Green, you heard a magnetic click. So the lights should be energizing. And they are. Yep, all the lights are working. Put this back to off. You saw the thing release. Set to auto. Just gotta put a cover on this. And we are all set. And it said it's got a battery backup. So, so if there's a event of a power outage, you don't have to reset the time, which is nice. It's not that hard to program. You hit timer, then you got your hours and minutes. You just press the clock, then you can set the time. So pretty straightforward. This time will tell how it holds up, and hopefully if everything's wired correctly, this should theoretically work. So we'll find out around 7 o'clock if, if it runs the program like it's supposed to. So we'll be back around then. Yep, 7 o'clock on the button. Lights fired up. That one's on. This one's on. So yeah, that Intermatic's defective and it's going back to Home Depot. Lighting up nicely. So, yep, defective timer. This one's programmed correctly. I turned on at 7. This is the timer here. It says GE Heavy Duty 7 Day Digital Box Timer. Tamper resistant, battery backup, universal voltage 120, 240, and 277. LED, CFL incandescent, and halogen compatible. Single pole, single throw, single pole, double throw, double pole, double throw, double pole, single throw. NEMA 3R rated enclosure. Let's see. Compared to those. Model E149422, I believe, is the model number. Made in China. But so far, it's working. We'll see how it holds up. I'll see how keep the box and all the instructions. This is the one that I bought at Home Depot that doesn't work. Intermatic T101, I don't know what the problem is. So getting my money back on that. This I got from Amazon. So, unless something else changes, I think that'll be it on this uh, video for the lights.